book of Revelations, chapter 17. Now, I, I, I feel for you folks if you're visiting with us today, um, I, because I'm not trying to scare anybody, but this is scary if you're not right with God. If you're not right with the Lord, this can be a little, a little intimidating, but it's the Bible and I want to teach it with the heart of God. I pray that you'll have understanding. Um, and people will have different thoughts and views on Revelation prophecy. I've read after many, many different people, commentaries, uh, theologians. And, and it, there are variations of different things whenever dealing with prophecy. I will teach you what I do know. Okay, I will try to share with you what I do know. You might have a different thought. That's okay. We still serve God together, okay? But uh, I started a series four months ago, uh, and it was called Things Which Must Shortly Come to Pass. We did 13 messages on the book of Revelations. We, we dealt with the seals in chapter 6, and we dealt with quite a bit with the judgments of God in the first half of the tribulation. We dealt with the book of Ezekiel. We dealt with the book of Daniel. We dealt with the book of Matthew, chapter 24 and chapter 25. It all comes together in this, um, Zechariah and other portions of the Bible. So what we're doing here is I took a break from it. Uh, I was gone a lot during the summer, and then uh, we had a you know surgery and things like this. And uh, by the way, I'm feeling pretty good now. Praise God. Amen. I, I thank the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, I did four miles on the elliptical the other day. Four miles on the elliptical, okay? Amen. <laughs> Trying to build my stamina back up um, and strength. And, and so today we're going to talk about this. It's called Things Which Shortly Must Come to Pass. This is going to be now part 14. And we're going to be dealing with the subject here, the, the subtitle, The Great Harlot. And the reason why I feel the urgency to come back to this and to preach on this now and to teach this is because of what's going on in America. Because of what is happening. You know things are different. You know things are happening. I want to talk about those, explain where it's coming from, and then how we are to deal with that and combat it. Okay. Um, I'm also considering when this is a whole series is done, I'll probably have 20 or so different messages on this. I'm going to put this all on a USB port and I'm going to give those for anybody who would like to give any kind of donation to the building fund. And you can have these. You can also go on YouTube. All these are on YouTube for free. There you get the video part. But if you want a USB when it's all done and you would like to share that, mail that out, give it to people, um, that's fine too. But any kind of donation to the building fund, okay? All right? All right, let's go to 17th chapter of Revelation, chapter uh, verse 1. And I'll read the first six verses. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, that's to John, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. It talks about kings, it talks about leaders, presidents, and, and rulers, and princes, and things like this. And the inhabitants of the earth, that means all the people, have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And John, if you would show that there, I'm giving you a little bit of a pic picture of what an artist tried to describe the harlot, the great harlot sitting on this beast. That's the Antichrist, the seven heads and the horns. They all are symbolic of different things. And verse 4, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked the gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. That's, that's Christians that were martyred, that were killed for the, their faith in Christ. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus... And when I saw her, I wondered this great admiration. Not that he admired her, but, but he was overwhelmed by, by what he had, had seen and, and what the Spirit of God, the angel of the Lord, was showing uh, him. Uh, again, uh, the great harlot. Let's pray. Father, as we come to you in the name of the Lord, I'm asking God for the anointing of God that I preach this and I have the mind and the will of God. 
as we minister this unto the people. Uh, Lord, we're not trying to scare anybody. If anything, this is by your grace a warning of what to prepare for and what's coming ahead. May we take it that way. May we understand and receive that this is the Bible, and God, you want us to learn this. So I'm asking for your help and grace today. May our hearts be open and receptive to thy word, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And you may be seated. Again, once I, I said also that months ago we began to deal with the book of Revelation and the end time events. And you can ask Brother John back there. You can get the CDs or you can go on our website. You can look at them, listen to them there as well or on YouTube. Uh, we took a little break from this particular series and by the help and the grace of God, we would like to continue as we dive a little bit deeper into the book of Revelation. So I'm going to be in chapter 17 here. I'm going to go back to chapter 7, chapter 8. We're going to talk about the vials and things like this uh, of the wrath of God. Uh, but some have the mentality that since we're Christians and we're going to be raptured, uh, up that we don't have to worry about this and we don't have to learn about this. But I disagree with that kind of mentality because it's in the Bible. And so therefore God must want us to learn the word of God or he would not put it in there. So from Genesis to Revelation, we want to learn the Bible. Not only that, but you need to be able to give an answer to somebody else of why you believe, a defense of why you believe what you believe. So you need to do this. Christians need to be have stability. We have to have knowledge so that we're not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Not only that, but although Jesus Jesus is coming back for his church, and although we don't know the day or the hour of his return, we must be prepared for what's happening now in the world, what's happening, what's taking place, what is all this about. I'll explain that to you. We're not living in normal days or what we think are normal days. I don't think we'll ever come back to what we call normal days anymore. These are unprecedented times. Now, we're living in the last days, and I'm sorry if we don't like to hear this, but it is the truth, and I have to share this and preach it because the days that we're living in are evil. Uh, uh, they're evil, and we cannot ignore that. So it's my prayer and desire to do the best that we can to teach you what the Bible has to say about these days that we're in and the days that are coming ahead. They will come to pass. They will happen. Now, this section of the Bible is a very deep and profound subject. As I have stated in the past, I don't know everything there is to know pertaining to the book of Revelations and the prophecies of the Word of God because prophecy is history in the future. Let me say this again. Prophecy is history in the future. In other words, what I'm saying is that you can not rewrite prophecy. It will happen according to the word of Almighty God, no matter what you believe it or not, okay? It'll come to pass. You will not be able to stop it, and we do our best to try to understand what the scriptures are telling us. Now, although there are some different ideas and views pertaining to the end time events, the most important thing is that you know that you're saved. You got to know that you're born again. I pray that you know that you are rapture ready, that your election is sure, that you know without a doubt that you're born again and a child of the king. This chapter opens up with the great harlot. So the question we need to ask is this, uh, what or who is the great harlot? Uh, what does it mean? What does it represent? Is this only for during the time of the tribulation or does this great harlot exist today? And by the grace of God, we'll attempt to answer some of those questions. So without a doubt, we do know that we're living in the last days. Can you say amen to that? We are in the last days. We have been for the past 2,000 years. You don't have to have much spiritual depth to know that we're living in difficult times. The Bible talks about a time when right will be wrong and wrong will be right. Well, folks, this is the time we're living in it right now, and it's going to get worse. The rapture of the church will be the gateway for all these events to begin uh, to unfold. After the rapture and during the seven-year tribulation, the wrath of God will be poured out upon the wicked, the lost, and the ungodly. The Bible makes it very clear that Jesus is coming back. Now, listen, he's coming back for church. He's coming back for the redeemed. He's coming back for the righteous. He's coming back for the saints of God. He's not coming back for the lost. He's not coming back for the wicked. He's not coming back for the sinner. He's not coming back for the ungodly. He's not coming back to just the church goer. Okay, I want you to understand that. He's not coming back. He's coming back for his own. He's coming back for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle that's been washed in the blood of the Lamb. He's coming back for the blood bought, the blood washed, the blood cleansed, saints of God. The Bible says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. That's a victory shout, by the way. And with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. The trumpet is a, a, a sign of alertness to wake up the call 
Paul, here we are. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. And that's what the Bible teaches. Hallelujah. Now make no mistake about it. There will be the rapture of the church and that which restrains the evil on this earth will be completely and totally removed. And once the church is gone, there'll be nothing holding back the darkness and the evilness and the sin and the filth and the wickedness to prevail over this earth. It's bad now. There's a reason why it's bad now. I realize that this is prophecy being fulfilled, but the, the church itself, uh, uh, the greater the light, it pushes back the evil and the wickedness on the earth, but the lesser the light, the more the darkness prevails. The church doesn't have the light she once had. I just, I'm not trying to offend anybody, I'm not trying to make people mad. I'm just saying that it doesn't have what it once had. Uh, but it, understand that it's bad, but nothing compared to what will be when the church is removed. It will be a literal hell on this earth, more than we can possibly comprehend. Uh, there will be no peace on this earth. Remember the second horseman in chapter 6 of Revelation. He was a red horseman, and he brought war on the earth, and it will be World War Three and great catastrophe on the earth and people will be killing people and he will remove all peace on the earth thank God right now whether you realize it or not we do have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding praise the Lord but the earth will be completely void of righteousness darkness will flood the gates like never before destruction will be everywhere wickedness and debauchery will manifest itself in untold measures and millions will perish from murder and bloodshed people will be blood thirsty even more than they are now. Now we think shootings are bad now, but what's happening today is just a little glimpse and a forerunner of what's coming ahead. And by the way, let me ask you this question. How does a school shooter in Texas get out on $75,000 bond bail? How does he do that? How does that happen? I've got questions. I want to know how this is possible. Why isn't he behind bars? What's happening to our judicial system of today? It's becoming more and more corrupt by the minute. And by the way, where did this boy get the $75,000? I got questions. Now, I won't share them over the pulpit privately. I'll tell you my thoughts on that. But nevertheless, it's a very difficult time that we're living in where justice is not prevailing any longer because of the darkness of man's heart and also because of the darkness of their heart, it demints their mind to where they cannot think properly. Okay? Or righteously. So during the seven year tribulation, you'll either worship the beast or the, in his image and, or die. You'll either take the mark of the beast or die. And right now, all that's going on in the world with COVID and the vaccine is more than COVID and it's more than a vaccine. Now, listen to you. I am not against anybody taking a vaccine. I am not anti vaccine. There are certain risks in taking it and there are certain risks in not taking it. And you have to weigh out that for yourselves and figure out what's best for you. No, I'm not anti-vaccine. I am pro-health choice. Amen. I want to say it again. I am pro-health choice. I, I Listen, I am not for a mandate and I'm not for someone forcing this upon anybody. Not everybody's the same. We all have different health issues. I personally cannot take any kind of vaccine, whatever it might be, because I have a uh, a, a compromised autoimmune disorder. But it's the evil and wrong for the government to force anybody to take anything that's against their will. It's evil and wrong for any place of employment to fire you for not complying and taking this vaccine or any kind of vaccine. It's evil and wrong for any hospital to deny a person medical treatment because they won't take the vaccine. People, let me tell you, even people are getting vaccinated and they're coming down with COVID. Some people take it and die. Amen. I just went to a calling hours to a friend that this happened to. 
I want you to understand we have to wake up to what's going on. It's more than COVID. It's more than a vaccine. There is an evil force and an evil power that wants to make you to subject. It wants to have power over you. It wants to take away the power of your choice. It wants to suppress your speech. It wants to take away your rights, drain your bank account, and it has excess spending. There's a border crisis in this land, lawlessness. There's an evil beast that is rising up as we speak that wants to have full control over you, not to mention the number of babies in the womb that they say it's okay to murder, and the government just passed a law and said up to nine months. You understand. Are you with me today? Uh, you're listening. I know you're listening. I, I can tell. I, I, I want to be very clear with this. That what's happening today is that there is a evil, wicked spirit behind the scenes. People are puppets and pawns being used. They don't even understand why they're doing what they're doing. But they're doing it. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a few moments. But if you don't take the vaccination, then you won't be able to buy and sell. They're trying to push this right now. Satan is working behind the spiritual curtain. And there's a forerunner to the beast that is conditioning, listen, conditioning the hearts and minds of the people to take the mark when that day comes. The way things are today, I'm believing and I'm hoping and I'm praying that Jesus will just come soon and take us on home together. We'll all get out of here together. Maybe it'll come while we're preaching this morning maybe it'll come tonight maybe next week I don't know but I'm ready I don't know how much longer that the Lord can hold out but I know why he hasn't come yet because God wants all people to get saved that's why we might suffer for somebody to get saved so if somebody's holding back get a hold of them by the nap of the neck and tell them get right with God <laughs> all right I got a whole lot more to say. Are we okay this morning? Yeah. I've put a lot of thought into this, folks, and what's happening today. Uh, now, you're not going to find this on CNN or MNBC or Fox. You're not going to find this on any of this, this folks. They're not going to agree. I, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm censored once they find out what I'm saying today. But during the tribulation, there'll be no buying or selling until you have the mark of the beast, which is 666. Now, remember this. I want you to remember what's going on right now, what they're trying to do right now to us for not complying, for not doing what they're telling us to do. And these are not laws. These are mandates, by the way. They're not laws. They're mandates. And mandates means you don't, you don't have to do it. They're, they want to scare you into complying. Now, you'll buy no gas for your car. In fact, they're pushing for a cashless society so that they can have full control over you, shut down your account where you can't get any money, that's what's happening. That's been a push for a long time, and it's moving fast now. You'll buy no groceries for your home, for your family, for your kids. You won't be able to travel, from, and you won't be able to go from state to state. In fact, our current president wants to push this law that says that we're, if you're not vaccinated, you can't travel from one state to another. You understand? Full control is what they're looking for now, okay? The very thing our current administration is trying to do now is just a taste of what's going to happen in the near future. Now, listen, inflation will be out of control. Now, right now, I don't know if you have stock. If you have a stock market, that's fine. I don't, I don't know, but I'm telling you that I've got some inside information of someone who has inside information that's saying that the current administration wants to crash the stock market. It's, the stock market is not healthy right now. It's got the flu, it's bumpy right now. Things are high and low, high and low. That, that, that's not good. It's unstable, okay? That's, maybe that's your retirement. Maybe you're looking at that. But I, I, don't, I don't know. you got to make a decision as to what you, you think you need to do. But inflation is already skyrocketing, spending money foolishly. It, it'll take one day's wages to buy one meal during the tribulation. Gas prices will be out of control. There'll be starvation. Disease will rage through the earth, and there'll be pestilence. Now, I don't know what you think, but I believe that COVID is a biological warfare on the world. I truly believe that. Now, it was created in a lab in China and Wuhan. I, I believe that with all my heart. Now, listen, whether you believe this or not, 
not. You can do your own research, but Fauci has something to do with this. There are lies and secrets and cover-ups, and the American people are not being told the truth. Now, now this is all bad, and it's getting worse, but nothing like the last half of Daniel's 70th week, known as the Great Tribulation. Now, during the Great Tribulation, God will unleash seven vials of his wrath. And we will get into this a little bit later in the future, but God's fury will be unveiled in unprecedented ways. Once the church is removed from the earth, the Antichrist, disguising himself under the cloak of a religious system, will rise up and he'll seemingly have all the answers to the world's chaos, problems, and confusion, and he'll sign a peace treaty with Israel, which will mark the beginning of the seven-year tribulation. Israel will reinstate the Old Testament sacrificial worship, and they will rebuild the temple of God, thinking it's for worship only later to discover it was an evil plot devised by Satan, the Antichrist, to break the peace treaty with Israel and to set himself up in the temple as God. This is known as the abomination of desolation. And you also find that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Now, according to Revelation chapter 13, a false prophet will rise up uh, and point the people to the Antichrist. Just as John the Baptist, a righteous man, a godly man, uh, pointed the people to Christ, he was a forerunner to Jesus Christ. The Antichrist will also have a forerunner, a false system that portrays itself to be God. Satan hates God and he wants to be God. Now, let me read some scripture to you. I know it's a little lengthy, but it's important. Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 17. And then John said, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs that he makes even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Now because of these miracles, verse 14, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth by the signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all both great and uh, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their hand or on their forehead, and that no man may buy, sell, except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, which is 666. You cannot buy, you cannot sell, you cannot trade, you cannot do anything. They will lock you down unless you take the vaccine, unless you take the mark. You see what's happening? Okay. Now, um, all right. You stayed, so I guess I'll continue. <laughs> I think you're interested in this. All right. Now, we come to the great harlot, and I'm, I'm glad that you're here at this church. I want you to learn the Bible. I want to teach you. So we come to the great harlot. The scene begins with an invitation. In Revelation 17 and 1, Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, that's John, saying to me, come and I'll show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. Now, now the waters speaks of people and nations, okay? And, and, and so John is seeing things revealed to him in the spirit. The Lord is showing John things that are yet to come. Revelation is full of types and symbols and analogies, and all of these point to the spiritual truths and deal with the end of the ages. Now listen, four times in this chapter, the woman is called a harlot. And her sin is called fornication. Now, the word fornication in the Greek is pornuo. Pornuo is where we get our English word pornographic or pornography. I want you to remember this. Fornication is the word pornuo, pornographic, pornography. The Holy Spirit is trying to paint a picture to us in the spirit. Her veil of influence, that is the harlot, has extended throughout the entire world, reaching into the 
high places of the kings and of the earth, the rulers and those in high government positions. From rich to poor, most will be influenced by her demonic manifestation. In fact, this is what I see happening right now in our nation, in the world, in our current status. The spirit of the great harlot is already at work in many people in high governing places. They are being influenced by her evil persuasive activity and they don't even realize it. They don't know what's going on because they're lost and they're blind to the truth. There is a veil over their eyes and they cannot comprehend spiritual truths of the word of God. Now the Bible clearly says this in John, 1 John 5 and 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Now what that means is this, that the whole world is under the power of the evil one. If you're lost, if you're not saved, they are inside the hand of the evil one. They're influenced by Satan and the world's antichrist system and they don't know it and they are the devil's puppets. And following the invitation, John was carried away into the spirit, into the wilderness and in the wilderness he saw there a harlot. And the Bible gives us a very vivid description. Look at verse 4. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. Now, the woman here, this harlot that John sees sitting on the beast on the sea, uh, is dressed in an expensive garment. Uh, she's decorated with gold and, and with precious stones. Uh, she's holding a golden cup in her hand, uh, and she's drunk with the blood of the saints. And on her forehead, she wears is a special name that says Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And so we also know this harlot is identified also with a city. Now, in Revelation chapter 17 and verse 18, it says this, and the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. And so she's identified with also a place or a city called Babylon. Now, this city will be prosperous, the city will be powerful, but it also is will be uh, idolatrous and dangerous. It pollutes the nations with its filth and its abomination. This, this Babylon will have an impact the entirety of the world. And this is a picture we have with the golden cup in her hand. According to verse 6, it persecutes those who belong to God and those who are saved or trust in Christ during the tribulation will be killed and martyred by her and because of her. Now, now, power and wealth and pollution and persecution describe what she is. The words summarize the greatest harlot's involvement on a worldwide scale. The Bible said she is referred to this as the mystery Babylon. Now, what do we know about Babylon? I'm trying to preach this kind of slow. It's a lot of information. You can get the CD. You can watch this again to try to understand. She's referred to as Mystery Babylon. So what do we know about Babylon? The city of Babylon was founded by Nimrod. The name Babel, and I want you to get this. The name Babel means the gate of God. The gate of God. The tower of Babel was an idolatrous attempt by man to defy God. It was to shake their fist at God. Man didn't want to be ruled by God. They wanted to be God themselves. And so God sent judgment, making man's one language into multiple languages. Now, from this point on, Babel came to mean confusion. Okay? The word Babel, write that down if you will. Babel at this point when God confused them for judgment, it confused their language and so Babel now came to mean confusion. Later, Babylon became a great empire under Nebuchadnezzar, but it was eventually taken over by the Medo Persian Empire, and we see that in Daniel chapter 7, and we dealt with that many, many messages in the past. And so now, by what I see here and have studied so far, there seems to be two Babylons. Chapter 17 deals what is known as a mystical Babylon. Chapter 17 is known as a mystical Babylon. Chapter 18 deals with Babylon the Great. 
and the literal location will be somewhere in the old Roman Empire. Some people believe that it will be Rome itself. The city of Babylon, which is portrayed primarily in its commercial and political dimensions. Okay, now listen, this is what I'm trying to get to here today. Every false religion in the world came can be traced back to Babylon. Even before its citizens tried to build the Tower of Babel, Satan had made the city. His headquarters introduced idolatry, the first secret societies, and many of the religious practices that continue to the present day. These eventually appeared as the foundation teachings of Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, Gaia worship, and a host of other cultic systems summed up in the Bible as Mystery Babylon. These false religions consistently violate the first four commandments which concern man and his relationship with God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That the Bible says that right away from the very beginning, defying God. This Babel hates God. It defies God. It's against God. It opposes Moses, God, and saints of God, and Christians, and people that are trying to live their life for the Lord. All right. I don't want to confuse you today, but I don't know how else to do this, but teach it here today, this morning. Now, if we're dealing with, if you'll hold on, it gets good toward the end. If, if we're dealing with two Babylons, one being mystical and the other being literal, then chapter 17, our text here today, the great harlot is what? She is that religious system that opposes and rejects everything that has to do with God, everything that is of God. We might say it's the religion of Babylon. It relates to witchcraft, demon worship, and the manifestation of demons. Every evil and vile thing you can think of comes out of this mystic Babylon. Everything. The word abomination is used many times in the scriptures, and this goes back and has reference to such practices in Babylon like idolatry and whoredom, prostitution, they're associated with demon worship, sorceries, witchcraft, spiritism, idolatry, paganism, which is being practiced in many places all over the world. And it's getting worse and worse and worse and more prevalent here in the United States of America. Amen. This evil, wicked beast, the harlot, this mystic Babylon. And think of the child sex trafficking and the evils that are going on in the world right now. And think of the evilness, think of the hideousness and think of the wickedness and those that are saved and have pure minds and pure hearts. It's hard for us to fathom the depths of the darkness of the demented minds and the hearts of men and women today. One of the things that concerns me for my youngest son to go into the police academy is that he is somewhat being exposed to the evilness of man. He sees the worst of man. All of that comes out of mystic Babylon. Think of this, that sex trafficking, the child sex trafficking, the, the sex industry and prostitution and drugs and all that goes along with it and has its roots in Babylon. Epstein and all his associates and the evil regime of immorality and harlotry have its roots in Babylon. The spirit of the great harlot is much alive today. And is currently fighting and warring against the saints of God. This evil beast, this wickedness, this evil harlot, mystic Babylon is fighting and warring against humanity. And is warring against the church. Yes. And most are not aware of what's going on behind the scenes and the powers of darkness. We're oblivious to it. We can't walk around as if nothing is happening. I don't understand it. I don't get it. You can't go along as business as usual. Satan is attacking and destroying lives. Now listen. Listen. There is so much confusion today. And I want you to remember now that the judgment of God came upon Babel. And now it means confusion. There's confusion today. Look at the war against genderism. The great harlot that says there are multiple genders. No, my beloved, let me say this to you today, that in the economy of God, there are only two genders, male and female. Yeah. 
In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. And God created two genders, but the great harlot is perverting everything that God has made to be good and for his glory that was made in his image. Satan is the great confuser. Satan is the great perverter, if you will. Young people are confused today. The spirit of Babylon, there's a mystic spirit today. Young people that we deal with on Wednesday nights in schools, the young generation of today, they are confused and God is not the author of confusion. I want you to know that. God does not cause confusion. God is not the author of confusion. There are many that have been taken under the influence of a perverted spirit that says that homosexuality Reality is okay and of God and you even have pastors and preachers that say it's okay. Amen. They have defiled the holy pulpit and the sacred desk of God. Amen. And I'm surprised and appalled that Christians are not more upset about this. We just want to go, Pastor, where it's easy. We just want to, you know what I'm saying? We don't want to have to deal with this. We don't want to have to fight with this. And it's here today, folks. And listen, homosexuality, and, and if you're dealing with that, I want you to know this, that we love you. And you're welcome in this place. You're welcome in this church. We don't want to help you in your sin. We want to help you out of your sin. We want to help you to know how God created you and that God has a will and a purpose for your life to save your soul, to set you free, and to come out from the lies that the devil and the beast and the mystic Babylon has been trying to tell people all these years, and now they're taking it all hook, line, and sinker. No, we want to help you. There's another way. There's another way. Glory to God. His name is Jesus Christ. He'll set the captive free. He'll set the sinner free. He'll give you new life. He'll, you'll be born again. Hallelujah. You'll know the joy, the peace, and the love of God. Hallelujah. God will do this. Amen. But you got to come to God and shame on those pastors and spiritual leaders that tell people you can live that kind of lifestyle and still go to heaven. That's mystic Babylon. Amen. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Sorry, it's been building up in me for a while. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to pull you out of the miry clay. I'm trying to pull you out of the sludge. I'm trying to pull you out of the grips of mystic Babylon. I'm trying to pull you out of the hands of the harlot. I'm trying to pull you out of the hands of the devil that tries to deceive because the devil wants every person to go to a lost and dying hell. But Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. He came to set you free. I can see it. I can feel it. I, in the spirit, there is this great harlot, and she's reaching in with her long hands and fingers. And she's got the United States of America. And she's got other parts of the nations and kings and people in high governing places have fallen into her trap, and they listen to her lies, and they're perverted. Amen. And like Babel, they don't want God to lead and guide them, and they're devoid of God. And there is so much wickedness and evil and corruption that's gone much deeper than you and I ever could have possibly comprehended. This is not a war against Democrats and Republicans. This is a war against good versus evil. Amen. You can't just think... Okay, I'm going to get, you know, somebody else in the office, and that's going to fix all the problems. That, that's the world's looking at this all wrong. The church is looking at this all wrong. I'm going to tell you who's going to fix the problems. His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of Almighty God. The Bible said there's coming a time when the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will rule and reign. And hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Be no problems then. Hallelujah. Oh, thank I tell you, folks, I've got good news for you. I know this is rough. I know this is bad. I know the Word of God gets a little difficult to try to understand, but I want you to know Jesus Christ is coming for his people. He's coming for his church. He's coming for his own. He's coming coming for the redeemed. He's coming for those that are born again. We've got hope. We've got hope. We've got hope. Hallelujah. <laughs> We've got hope in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
We're trying to help people. We don't hate people. We love people. Oh, you don't love me. You don't. You hate me because you don't accept my lifestyle. I love you, but not even God accepts your lifestyle. Amen. It goes against nature. You've fallen under the spell of the beast of the great harlot. It's got its hold on you. It's in the spirit. All this is spiritual. Amen. We'd be scared half to death if God gave us a glimpse of what goes on behind the spirit curtain. God help us. <laughs> oh, Lord. I, I tell you, someone must get up there and move that clock. You ought not do that when I'm preaching, all right? All right come on, folks. Hallelujah. Now, young people are confused and, 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 and the great harlot, by the great harlot. America, I, I hate to have to deal with this. I'm sorry. But I want you to understand what's happening. America worships sex and perversion and immorality, and it, there's a big uh, sexual, huge industry in America. I, I saw, I, I don't know, I, uh, in a playground, I don't know if it's in America or some other country, but there's the, the female parts and the man's parts. It's a slide in a park, and the parts are together, a slide. It worships sexuality. It's the great harlot understand that pornography and prostitution all come out of the great harlot. The church must wake up and beware of what we're fighting against and begin to pray like never before. We have to pray and intercede for souls because we're fighting against this satanic spirit that has its roots in the most evil, hideous, darkened, demented system that beggars description. When, when, when people fall into the trap of pornography, that is the great harlot that has her hands on you. Yes. Do you understand? And this nation pushes for it. There's, listen, there's not even any blocks, rules, nothing on internet. Are you kidding me? Anything goes. You have access to everything, every, every evil, wicked, debaucherated, demented, darkened, thing out there in the world and you wonder why our kids are confused because Babel that's why it's in the nation it's confusion Peter that's why listen the time we're living in, that's why Peter told us be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour resist him steadfast in the faith we do know that the antichrist will use the false religious system to disguise himself to deceive millions and millions and millions of people Satan comes as an angel of light the antichrist will use it for his gain and when he's finished with it then it will be destroyed. In fact, in chapter 17 of Revelation, look at verse 16, and it says, And the ten horns which thou sawest, those are leaders or countries upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. Look at verse 17, For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. It's the will of God. This is the judgment that comes up upon the beast in the middle of the tribulation. God will actually put it in the hearts of the ten kings or the rulers or kingdoms to come against this false religious system and destroy it. This, of course, will open the pathway for the Antichrist to set himself up in the temple as God. The people will be forced to worship him, and if they don't, they will be killed. The great harlot may be on its way here during the seven-year tribulation, but the warning of what I'm trying to make very clear to you here today is the spirit of the harlot system is already here, and it's been here my beloved and it'll continue to grow worse and worse and there will be many that will be swallowed up by her evil poison and during the tribulation she will make her full debut you see it's already here we can't imagine it getting worse but it's going to get worse you can't, you can't sit back in America and say, well, it'll work itself out. No, it's, it's, it's more than that now. We're in trouble. We are in trouble. So we as the church, number one, we have to recognize what's happening. 
Okay, we're talking about a false religious system that sets itself up as God. It will lead millions astray. It has its own agenda. It's controlled by man, influenced by Satan himself. It has its roots in political men, uh, the political agenda of men. The great harlot is in the government. It's in the judicial system. It's in public schools. Don't let her in the church. Because she's already made her way into some of what they call the church, but that's not the true church. Public schools are allowing, and public libraries are allowing these men to come in that are dressed up like women and to dance and pole dance with their children. What do you call those people? What is it? Drag queens. Drag queen story hour comes from the beast, the great harlot. It's the spirit. It's already here, and it's only going to get worse. You understand now? Do you see? Is it coming together? Confusion, Babel, Babylon, Satan's headquarters. It'll be the Antichrist headquarters in chapter 18, the new Babylon that they're trying to rebuild. This is what we're feeling today. This is the beast that's trying to take control of us now. You see, it's full of power, it's full of influence, it's, it's full of persuasion and lies and greed, but it cares nothing about God, and it doesn't care about you. It only wants your money. It wants to control your money. It wants to take your money and give it to other people that do not work for it, Amen. that could work for it. It wants to keep you weak. It wants to keep you uh, dependent. It wants to keep you controlled. It wants to control your thoughts. It wants to control your speech. It wants to control your actions and all your accounts and everything that you do. It favors evil and resists that which is good and pure and holy and of God. Now listen, I believe this great chapter in the book of Revelation is given to us for a reason. Why did God put that in there? He's going to tell us about the end time events. He showed this to John in, a, in the Revelation. He showed this to John. He's had this revelation. He had this understanding, but God is showing us. God is letting us learn this. God is revealing us to us. Why? To warn the church, to warn the body of Christ, that we also might warn others. It's the grace and mercy of God to reveal these things to us, that we might be what? Spiritually prepared. It's time to learn. It's time to grow. Glory to God. This is not the time for the church to fall asleep. It's the time to wake up. We can't be spiritually passive, and we can't be spiritually spiritually relaxed anymore. The time has come. The trumpet has sounded. Paul said, now it's high time to awake out of sleep. For now, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night's far spent. The day's at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the work of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Listen, my beloved friends, I love you. I care about you. God loves you. God cares about you. But listen to me today. All than what I said if you're saved if you're born again then we are on the winning side we are on the victory side we're not lost we're not in darkness we've been saved and redeemed by the blood of the lamb and we as the church are the body of Christ and we are adopted sons and daughters in the Lord and we've been taken out of the darkness and placed in the light of God's son and we've been washed and cleansed and made whole and one day we will rule and reign with him glory to God what am I saying here today? And all that's been said and the time we're living in, this is not the time to quint, oh, saint of God. It's not the time to give up. It's not the time to throw in the towel. It's not the time to lose hope. Some of you have felt the powers of darkness in your own family. You've withstood the enemy himself. He's after some of you. He's after your marriage. He's after your kids. He's after your church. He's after your ministry. He's after your business. He's trying to cause confusion. The great harlot is trying to destroy what God has made in his image to be pure and good and holy. Though therefore, my beloved, this isn't the time to give up, but this is the time to stand your ground by faith. Hallelujah. Folks, no matter what anybody else does, you got to stand your ground. Whether family or friends, children or not, you got to stand your ground. Church got to stand your ground. We'll not budge. We'll not bow. We'll not compromise. We'll not give in. We will rise to the call and the occasion of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will declare the word of Almighty God. We will tell people the way of salvation. We will help people. 
We will tell people the truth. We'll pray for people. Hallelujah. The church, the church has a voice. The church has God. The church has the word of Almighty God, the sword of the Spirit. We've got hope. We've got the power of the Holy Ghost. We've got the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 My faith is in God. My faith is in the Word. My faith is in Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm just trying to warn you so you won't be blindsided. I'm trying to inform you of what's going on in the spirit world. That's all. If you're not saved, I'm sorry. It's going to be rough for you. In, in Afghanistan, there are beheading Christians right now. Hanging them from a crane. Uh, uh, I read where, and uh, I get my information not from the media because they don't tell you, but I got, I got information and from some liable news sources, and they're going house to house, finding Christians, whether they're Afghanistanians or, not, or Americans or whoever, and they're taking them, they're taking the husbands, and they're beheading them in front of their family. And we think we have it rough. And th you can th thank our current administration for their sloppiness. He's a, he's a fool. I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. I'm talking about policy and principle. And what's right according to the word of God. Lord God, have mercy. I'm sorry if I offend anybody. I've always been one to not hold back. I am holding back a little bit today. <laughs> so thank you, Pastor. I feel better now. <laughs> Boy, you sure made my day. <laughs> it's isn't the time to give up. Shama. It's like the enemy keeps coming all the time and raiding a man, taking his food, taking his supply. He has nothing. So he's in his pea patch, you know. And here come the Philistines. Here they come again. Here comes, here comes that old evil, wicked spirit, the enemy of God. And, and Shammah, I don't, I don't know. Well, anyway, I don't have a stick. How to get a stick. Shammah, Shammah, there's sticks in there. And he's like, you know what? I'm sick and tired of this. I've had enough. Every time I have something, you take it away and give it to somebody else. I work hard, and I'm trying to provide for my family. And I'm trying to have a little bit of security so when I retire, I have a little bit in the bank. And I'm getting sick and tired of it. I am tired of it. And so what Shama did, the church did, I mean what Shama did, uh, is he said, I've had enough. I'm standing my ground. And those Philistines came to attack him, and God gave Shammah a supernatural power, and he fought off every one of them. The Bible said God gave Shammah a victory. The Bible said God gave Shammah a great victory. <laughs> I'm ready for a great victory. Glory. God, God bless you. Oh, God bless you. Hey, bless your heart, man. Y'all came on a good day, didn't you? <laughs> Amen. Oh, Lord, God bless you. First time I've met you. What's your name? Tyra, God bless you. Amen. Well, see how observant I am. Tara, sorry, sorry. Y'all picked a good day to come too, didn't you? <laughs> okay, all right. And so Shaman said, you know what, I've had enough. And there's going to come a time in the church finally says, I've had enough. You've been trying to shut us down. You've been lying to us. You, you've, been, you've been deceiving us. You've been doing things that are contrary to God and his word. And so there comes a time where you just have to say, Shammah says, I'm no longer going to be compliant to you, enemy. Amen. I'm not doing it anymore. 
And he stood his ground, and God wrought him a great victory. And although it's hard, and although you get weary, and I get weary, and I get tired, and, and when we get by ourselves, that enemy fights our mind. And, 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 but we are to stand our ground, and I'm asking the church to suit up by faith in these last days, put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. God's in control, not the devil. Even in chapter 17, even in chapter 17, when judgment came upon the great harlot, that was God that allowed that. The devil couldn't do just what he wanted to. And God put it in their hearts to... To, to, to come again, oh, that's a good thing. God, start praying. God put it in their hearts of these evil, wicked people to come against one another. Hallelujah. <laughs> and let them tear each other down and bring each other down. Oh, God, bring it down. God leads and guides your steps, not the devil. The Lord's with you, and if God be for you, who can be against you? And greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. In these last days and end times, we need to have a faith that will cause us to be bold as lions. You see, some people have what we call fizzled faith. Fizzled faith. What happened? What happened to your faith? Be full of the Holy Ghost uh, that will be able to combat the pressures that we face on the outside. Pray like you've never prayed before. Intercede for the lost and the backslider like you've never prayed before. Live your life for the glory of God regardless of whether others may do because I'm telling you that soon and very soon that Jesus Christ is coming. God is in full control and his word does not lie. Hold fast to the word of God. Hold fast to the confession of your faith. Hold on to God by faith. Believe him and may your strength be renewed like the eagles. I believe the Lord reveals these things in his word so that we can be spiritually prepared for what's happening today and what will happen in the future. We can no longer be sideline Christians. We can no longer be one of those just getting by Christian mentalities. You can't be just getting by anymore. You'll, you'll get caught up. You understand she, the great heart, she'll get you. She will. You can't just be passive, be proactive. Your prayer, your life, your time with God. And she's so deceptive, and, and she looks so attractive. All oh, that flesh loves it. And, and the eyes of the flesh love it. And the pride of life loves it. You see. But you know it's time to dive in with both feet, to pray for yourselves, to pray for your family. Men, rise up. Listen, be men, spiritual men of God. You pray for your wife. You pray for your family. I grab a hold of my wife's hand a lot of times within the car at home. I said, let's pray together. And we just begin to pray together, you know, just instantly like that. And why, why do you got to pray? Because the devil's fighting me. That's why. Devil, let's pray together. We pray. Man, just right at it. Get out, get, get, we just get after it. Anytime, any place, we pray. And it always feel better. So it's time to, to pray for your family, your children. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Pray for each other. No longer just sitting on the sideline, but now diving in with all that you have, living your lives for Jesus. Dive in prayer. Dive in his word. Live it. Declare it. Proclaim it. Testify it. Believe it. Do it. You can't stop it, folks. It's not, you can't stop what's going to happen. You can't stop it. I, I can't stop it. You can't pray against it. It's not going to happen. It's going to happen. I realize that. But in the process of this happening, we can pray for souls. Snatch them out of the devil's hand. And also, you can be spiritually prepared so that when the great harlot or the spirit of the great harlot tries to come against you, you'll understand where it's coming from and pray against it. Amen. You'll recognize the powers of darkness and the evil spirit and the long hand with the long fingers trying to reach in and to grab your husband or to grab your wife or whatever it might be. When you, when you feel tempted to go into immorality or pornography, come on. How many great men of God have been succumbed to pornography, prostitution, that great harlot? You understand what's going on today? It's in our government. It's in our schools. It's, in our, it's everywhere. Uh, uh, that doesn't mean I cock an attitude against people at all. That means I, I want to do what I can. I recognize, and I want to pull them. I want to help them. Amen. Can we stand together, please? Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, how do you, how do you preach a message like this optimistically, huh? You just preach. You just preach the word of God. Lord Jesus, Holy Ghost of God, now I pray that you've touched some hearts today, Lord. I need thee every hour. Is that okay? <laughs> I changed it on you, Abby. Sorry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I don't know. I don't know. Your spiritual condition today, only God does, and you know. 
Some people can be deceived and think that they think they're a pretty good person, but see, that, that doesn't get you into heaven and that doesn't wash your sins away. There's a lot of good people that are lost. A lot of good people, a lot of friendly people that don't know Jesus. No, but you gotta be born again. See, you gotta recognize you're a sinner and you gotta be willing to turn from those sins. That's called repentance. And then you come to Jesus and you ask him, to save your soul, to wash your sins away. You believe he's the son of God and he died on the cross for you. And now you surrender your life to him and you want to live your life for him. See, that's how you get saved is by faith. By grace through faith we are saved. You're, it's not you, it's not works, it's not your goodness that could never save you. But I pray today that if you're not saved, you will not walk out of this church until you give your heart to Christ. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm telling you, my friend, the things we preached about years ago and, and talked about the prophecies that would come to pass, we thought we'd never see them happen except the rapture of the church, but we never thought we'd see this today. We never thought we would see the control. We never thought we would see the, the lies, the darkness, the hideousness, the evilness that's upon us. It's not time to mess around. It's not time to delay, but it's time to give your heart to God. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Mark, I want to get saved today. I'm not saved. I want to give my heart and life to Jesus Christ. I've made up my mind right now. I want to live for the Lord. You just raise your hand. You just raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you. It's okay. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm just going to pray for you. Pastor Mark, I'm not saved. You're, maybe you're watching live. I'm not saved. You just, you just acknowledge that right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody want to help you? Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor Mark, boy, boy, you've hit the nail on the head and I really understand what you're saying and that, that evil, hideous spirit's attacking me. It's attacking me. It's trying to destroy my life. I need you to pray for me. Maybe that's you today. It's going to take some courage, but just raise your hand. Say, pray for me, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you. I see that hand. I see that hand. Thank you. I thank you. Anybody else? You feel the attacks. Thank you. You feel it. Be real honest. Hallelujah. Maybe some of us, listen, we, we recognize the time that we're living in. We've got people that we know that are family, that are lost, that are in bondage, that are bound, and we need to pray for them. Maybe you just need to make up in your mind right now that you're going to dedicate your life to intercede and to pray for the lost and for people. You're going to make a better effort to live this Christian life by the grace of God, a better effort to be in the Word of God, a better effort to be an intercessor of prayer, a better effort to be faithful unto God, to have a better understanding of what you're fighting up against now, whatever it might be. Now listen, whether you raise your hand or not, I just would like you to invite you to come to this altar and if we could just pray together. I want you to pray for my brothers and my sisters. I'm going to pray for strength for you. Just come to this altar. Just come stand up here if you would like. That's okay, just come. That's all right. It's okay. I just want the church to gather together by faith, understanding what's going on today, understanding what we're up against. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. It's okay. See, we're the church of the living God. We're in this together. We believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. We believe in the power of the Word. Hallelujah. Some of us, we're up against a major warfare in our families, with our children. There is a fight beyond what you can believe. The devil, the beast, they're trying to destroy. You're more than welcome to come to pray. Hallelujah. You're more than welcome to come. Can I have others to come help us? Just to pray for those that are here. Just come and help us. It's okay. I, I, I know I went a little long today. I'm sorry, but let's just come and pray. Hallelujah. You're watching online. You pray. You pray. You believe God. We're in this together. The battle is real. The battle is hot. God help us. Hallelujah. We recognize the source, that great harlot. Oh God, we pray in the name of the Lord. Let us be spiritually prepared and strengthened, oh God, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Give us strength. Give us strength, God. Give us strength, God. Give us strength, God, I pray in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need the Lord. I need the Lord.
I need the Lord. I need the Lord. I need him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, I'm going to be a prayer warrior for God. I'm going to intercede on behalf of the lost. I'm going to pray for their soul in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to be used to the Lord. Hallelujah. I give my life, my heart, my all to Christ. Hallelujah. Let my light shine. Warn others of the coming days. Hallelujah. Try to snatch them out of the hand of the enemy. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God. Oh, Father, strengthen my brother. Strengthen my brother. Protect him, I pray, Father. Oh, God, we love you. We praise you. The Spirit of God to rest upon him. The anointing of the Lord, I pray. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, folks. Hallelujah. Listen, we're on the victory side. We're on the victory side. We're on the victory side. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Touch us, strengthen us, help us, God. I pray in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Strengthen my brothers in Christ in this warfare, in the powers of darkness that might try to destroy a soul. We believe in the power of God. We'll stand on his word. We'll believe by faith. We'll plead the blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, touch us now and heal us, I pray. Heal our body. Heal us completely. Make us whole by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. We accept and receive by faith the healing of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To make my brother whole. In the name of Jesus. God, we love and praise you. We have a part in this, God. We're a part of the body, Father. We're going to pray. We're going to believe for souls. We're going to believe for the lost. We're going to believe for oh God. In the name of Jesus, give us strength to live this life for you. To live it for you, God, I pray in the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I do pray. I thank you, Lord. Give us strength, God, in these weary days. God, you are in control, and I trust in you. Power of your spirit, God. The power of your spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, you control my life. I live for Jesus. Give my sister strength. I pray for her. The battle rages, but God, you will give her strength. I pray for her children. I pray for her, her family. Come to know Christ be brought out of that that darkness and that blindness God that they might see in the truth and accept it and give their life to Christ I pray God help us we believe in the Lord in Jesus name Father God I love you I praise you God I thank you for the revealed truth I thank you for your presence and your spirit strengthen my sister let her light shine. She give an answer for which, why she believes. Give her strength, O oh God. I pray in the name of the Lord. God, we need your presence. Overshadow her, Lord, I pray. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now we have understanding. Now we see what's going on and why it's happening so fast. <laughs> it just lets me know Jesus is coming soon. It lets me know he's coming. He's coming. And I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Hallelujah. Praise God. We will, in that battle of Armageddon, we'll ride with Christ. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, it gets good. Uh, I got a few things to talk about. But I'm telling you, I'm coming into chapter 19 and 20, and it gets good. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> There's a new Jerusalem, <laughs> new heaven, new earth. Satan, we bound, thrown in the bottomless pit, lake of fire. The false prophet, oh Lord, thank you, Lord. I pray for the church. I pray for my brothers and my sisters that they'll not waver, they'll not compromise, they'll not buckle under the pressure of this world and the things that may come against us. Some folks are losing their jobs. 
Some folks are losing their jobs because they won't compromise and give in because they think they're doing what they know is best for them and their family. God, I pray in the name of the Lord that you'll strengthen them. Help them, Lord. You'll give them a better job and with better pay and with better benefits. You'll provide just like you provided for Elijah when he's by the lake Cherith, Lord God. The brook Cherith, I pray in the name of the Lord. God, you'll meet the needs like you did with the children of Israel in the wilderness when you brought the manna and the quail. Lord, water came gushing out of a rock. Hallelujah. See, there's nothing our God can't do. I, I live to a different standard. I live to the holy word of God. And that Bible tells me my God moves by faith and the power of Almighty God can meet every need. And he can supply every need in your life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Live for God. Live for the Lord. Not here today to try to scare anybody. It's not my intentions at all. Just trying to let you know what's coming ahead and what's happening now. Father God, I love you. I pray for your grace and your strength upon every person. Give them boldness. <laughs> Power of the Holy Ghost. Overshadow them, Lord. Strengthen them. Give them wisdom that comes from heaven above. Lord God, protect them, their home, their families, their children. Their... Protect them everywhere they go, I pray. Oh God, we thank you, we love you, and we praise you, Father. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight, come on, have service at 630. Worship together. Pray together tonight. And I'm going to continue now for a little while on this series. Try to finish it up. I have a little bit more to say about, about the great harlot and Babylon, but I, I'm telling you, I want, I want you to have understanding of the Word of God. There is hope. <laughs> Even though it looks so bad, looks so rough, there is hope <laughs> through Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad that we'll miss all that? Aren't you glad? Praise God. We're on the victory side. <laughs> I said we're on the victory side. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Hallelujah. We're children of the King. We're part of the family of God. I'll lay hold of the promises that we have through Jesus Christ. Every promise, every word, every thing God has given us by faith. Hallelujah. Well, let's stand together. Turn around to somebody and tell them you appreciate them in Jesus' name. Appreciate you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Love them. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get the word out. Let people see this. Praise God. Amen. See you back tonight at 630. I hope you'll make it. The Lord bless you. Keep you. May his face shine upon you. His glory. joining us live. God bless you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.